This video is going to be for a Vermont school bus pre-trip inspection for the interior. I'm going to start by making note about the doors. That they work properly, the rubber seals are all intact, the glass is not broken or damaged, and the seals are not leaking, broken, or damaged. The stairs have no tripping hazards. The hand railings are securely mounted not broken or damaged, and all the nuts and bolts are in place. The stair light is of the proper color, is not cracked or broken. The fire extinguisher is full and is up to date. The reflector triangles are mounted under the seat. Stepping on the platform, be sure to turn the ignition to the run position. If it's not in the run position, the electronics won't work and you need the alarms to be able to sound in order to pass this exam. At this point, turn to the rear and check all of your seats. The seats have to be secure, front and back. Part of the reason for this is some of the cushions are removable, so you have to make sure they're all secure. You have to touch and pull on each one of them. Moving to the rear of the bus, you wanna check the emergency door. Open the door all the way until it locks because you want to hear the audible alarm for the back door. You want to make note of that to the examiner. Push the door again, unlocks it, and you can latch it back. You also want to test the post trip button that it's not sticking or broken. Turning around, you want to make note of all the dome lights. They're not cracked or broken, and they are the proper color. You also want to make note that the emergency exits are all clearly marked. There are four windows, emergency exits, and two hatch. To do the hatch, you want to push the door open first. Because if you don't, you won't be able to, uh, to, to seat this bar in the slot where it belongs very easily anyway. You can do it, but it's very difficult. Turn it, you wanna hear the audible alarm, open it all the way. Close it back, make sure that slot gets in there, and then the alarm goes off. Be sure you know how to work this before you do your exam. For a window, you wanna open each window all the way and make note that the alarm goes off. And you'll do each window unless the examiner tells you you don't have to. Also, both hatches unless he tells you you don't have to. Moving to the front of the bus, you want to check your, your body fluid kit and your first aid kit, that they're secure and they are filled. Your registration and proof of insurance must be uh, able to be shown and spare fuses we keep within this pouch. Note to the examiner, we also keep spare fuses in the fuse box that's located under this panel. After that, you can make sure that the seat is securely mounted and that the seat belt works properly and is not frayed or damaged. <clears throat> Then you can have a seat. The first thing you want to do is check your mirrors. You want to make sure uh, to describe um, what the mirrors are supposed to be set at. You've already done the exterior exam, so you know they're not cracked or broken. But you want to note that you can see the side of the bus, you can see the rear tire touching the ground, and you can see 200 feet behind the bus. <clears throat> And note that for both flat mirrors. And then go to your convex mirrors. You want to note that you can see the front of the rear tire touching the ground. The entire side of the bus up to the mirror bracket on both sides. And an extra lane of traffic on both mirrors. Then move to your crossover mirrors. You want to be able to see the entire front of the bus from the bumper to the ground. The area around the 
front tires on both mirrors and the area around the service door. Then you want to note your rear view mirror. You can see the tops of all the seats and the top of the rear window. Next, you want to do the instrument panel and all of your switches, whatever you have on your particular bus. You have to test each switch to make sure that it is not sticking or broken. Not necessarily that it works at this time because the engine isn't running. Some of them may not, depending on your, your vehicle. But you have to test each switch to make sure it's not sticking or broken. Go through each one, even your uh, safety lenses that are the proper color and not broken. And you'd go through each switch that way. You'd come to your, uh, your dash. Again, you test your headlights, your increase and decrease button for the light intensity on your instrument panel, whether or not you have cruise control buttons, that they're not sticking or broken. The same with your directional switch and your windshield wiper switch. Be sure to turn the windshield wiper on. He wants to see that they're working. I saved the instrument cluster for last, but you can do it whatever order you want to. But run your shifting lever up and down. Make sure it's not sticking or broken. The same with every switch that you have, including environmentals that are not sticking or broken. You'll move to your throttle. You want to note that it's not sticking or damaged. And the same with your brake. It's not sticking or damaged. We move to the instrument cluster next. And in order to test that, you have to start the engine. You want to note that the alternator is charging between 12 and 14 volts, which this will be shortly. You want to note that the oil pressure gauge is working. The water temperature gauge is working and that the transmission gauge is working. Also the RPM gauge is working. Note that your fuel tank gauge is working, the depth tank gauge is working, and your primary and secondary air tanks are working properly. The speedometer is working properly because it's reading zero. At this point you can turn the engine off. Turn it back to run, and you need to note that your ABS lights came on and off, indicating the ABS is working, your anti lock brake system is working properly. Next, you want to test all of your lights. So, you want to make sure your door is closed because you're going to be running your eight ways. You'll ask the examiner for assistance and he'll go outside and stand probably right there. And you'll run through your headlights, directionals, four ways, and all of your eight ways, including ambers and reds. You need to make sure the stop sign comes out. Then he'll step to the rear of the vehicle and you'll do the same thing for all your rear lights. So make sure you know how they work and that they're all working properly. He'll come back on board and you will already have had the bus running because you have to test the reverse lights and he has to be able to hear the audible alarm for backing up, as you can hear that. So before you turn the bus off, wait until he comes back on board and then close the door because you'll be doing the brake test next. We're going to make sure your system is fully charged. We're in the white, so we're good. At this point, we'll turn it off. But now we need to turn it back to run again because we're going to need to hear the audible and visual alarms for the air brakes. The first test you're going to do is the parking brake. You're going to be looking for a two pound drop or more within 60 seconds. You step on the service brake, push the park brake in, release the service brake, 
and watch your gauges. You want to make sure that they don't drop more than two pounds in 60 seconds and you have to time this with a watch or your phone. After 60 seconds, you want to test your service brake, stepping down hard on it and holding it. After the initial drop in pressure, you're looking for a three pound drop or more. And you have to time this as well, 60 seconds. If there's no drop, you can continue to the next test, which is bleeding the brakes off. You're gonna pump the brakes and you're gonna look for the audio and visual alarm to come on before 55 PSI. This one comes on a little earlier, which is fine, every bus is different. But Vermont law says it has to come on before 55 PSI. You keep draining the brakes, waiting for the spring brakes to come on between 20 and 45 PSI which this fit, you just heard it pop out. Spring brakes are now on. That part of the test uh, is okay. Now we wanna charge the system by turning it on. So the compressor is running and the system is charging. You're gonna note the uh, alarms are gonna go off. Uh, audio and visual alarm will go off at 75 PSI. And then at 85 PSI approximately, because it's not marked on this gauge, to 100 PSI must be done within 45 seconds. You can't idle the engine faster to make this happen. You can't use a fast idle button. It has to do it naturally. So we're coming up on 75 PSI and the audio and visual should go off. Next, you're going to wait until it gets a little further. You're going to guess at about 85 PSI, which should be right about there. And you'll start your timer again with a watch or your phone. And it must be, must reach 100 PSI before 45 seconds. So it has reached 100 within 45 seconds, so that part of the test is good. You're now going to do a uh, park brake test and drive forward test. But to do that, you have to retrieve the chalks that should have already been done before uh, you began your testing. So we're going to turn the key off, take the key with you, open the door, and retrieve the chalks. Just because I only have one hand, I'm gonna just set them there for now. Vermont law does not say you have to chalk the wheels, but you do have to chalk the wheels to do uh, part of this test, which is the bus just staying in one place without brakes on. Closing the door, you can now cycle the engine, cycle the electronics, Start the engine. And at this point, because you're going to be trying to move the vehicle, you want to make sure to put your seatbelt on. We have plenty of air. The first test is going to be whether or not the brake holds in reverse while revving up to approximately 1500 RPMs. Holds fine. Same with driving forward. And it holds fine. Now we're going to release the brake, drive forward at about five miles an hour, and then step on the brake to make sure the steering wheel doesn't fold to the left or to the right. And that was fine. That completes your air brake test. At this point, the examiner will tell you whether or not you passed or failed, and you'll be able to do the skills test or driving, whichever uh, is required.